So today, we're gonna make recording those vocals in Pro Tools simple. No more confusion, no more overwhelm. We're gonna make this easy. Let's dive in. Ooh, see, it's doing a little something. So if this is our first time meeting, I am Jordan Eastler with My Audio Academy. And this specific video is extremely important to me because I will never forget whenever I first got Pro Tools, this is about 10 years ago. So I actually got the physical box of Pro Tools and I was so excited to get home and to start to dive into Pro Tools. That feeling of excitement and of enjoyment quickly turned to overwhelm and doubt whenever I actually opened up Pro Tools on my computer. I literally had no idea how or where to get started. It took me an entire three months before I finally had the courage to attempt to run a recording session in Pro Tools. But lucky for you, you're not gonna have to do that. We broke it down into a very easy to follow step-by-step -step training. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be recording them vocals. So let's go ahead and dive into uh, point number one, which is going to be creating your session. This is probably what it's gonna look like whenever you get your Pro Tools screen set up. So I've got create over here. Let's go ahead and name this uh, the session. I personally like to just do the local storage. That's gonna save it on your computer. But right now, we're not gonna create from template, but after this video, after we create our template, you will eventually start creating this from your template. File type, we're gonna go wave. Bit depth, we're gonna go 24. Uh, sample rate, we're gonna go 48. And then we're just gonna keep last use IO settings. We are going to select interleaved, and I personally like to use a prompt for location. That way you're not risking losing all your, your Pro Tools sessions, trying to find them, you know, places where you don't even know where you saved them. And these settings, they're ultimately gonna give you the best audio quality and it's gonna give you the best computer performance across the board. Now that we've got those settings selected, we're gonna go to create and now we've got our Pro Tools session pulled up. Now I already know where your mind's going. I know your Pro Tools session does not look like this. There's gonna be some settings over here that is not showing on yours. Um, we're gonna go through that, I promise. Just trust me on that. This is honestly the portion of the training that I get 95% of my questions from beginner audio engineers. This is super important and basically what we're doing is we are adjusting your Pro Tools to effectively communicate with your personal setup. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to our setup window and we are going to go to playback engine. And what we need to do here is we need to make sure that our interface is selected here. And this training, I am using a Universal Audio Thunderbolt. And just for the sake of the video, let's go ahead and click it. We'll go yes. The next thing that we need to adjust is our buffer size. For the sake of time, we're not gonna break this all the way down, but I think this is very important as you're just getting started. If you've ever been in a recording studio or you've ever tried to record yourself, and whenever you speak into the microphone, you hear yourself back and, it, and it's like a delay, more than likely the issue is going to be your buffer size is not selected appropriately. The way that you fix this, you want to adjust your buffer size. The sweet spot for me is gonna be 256 or 128. I would probably select 128. The only time that I would go to 256 is if your computer is a little bit older and it's having a hard time keeping up with you recording and you start to notice that Pro Tools is crashing. That's when you may want to drop it down to 256. And then from here, you can just kind of copy my settings. And uh, yeah, the next thing that I want to cover here is we're going to come right back up here to setup. But this time we're gonna go to IOs. What we're doing here is just making sure, once again, just kind of making sure that your computer and Pro Tools is operating with your interface appropriately. So whenever you press record, you actually have some kind of signal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna first go over here to our input tab. More than likely yours does not look like this, but that's okay, we're gonna fix that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here. Uh, we're here at input, then we're gonna click default. Unless you're using an Apollo twin, just like I am, yours isn't gonna look like this. Yours is basically gonna pull up whatever your audio interfaces inputs are. So same thing goes with the output and that's where we're going next. We're gonna go to output and then we're gonna click default and then we're going to go to bus and here we're also going to click, you guessed it, default. Bam. Your Pro Tools screen still does not look like mine. So let's go ahead and go through exactly how I have mine set up. And the way that I've got my Pro Tools set up is for maximum effectiveness and efficiency whenever I'm recording vocals. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come up here to this little arrow right here. And we are going to make sure that these settings are selected. And this is giving you a lot of different options to where you can quickly maneuver Pro Tools as you start to get more and more adjusted and used to Pro Tools. So now that we've got 
that set up, the next thing that we're gonna do is we need to adjust some things within our edit window. So yours is probably in shuffle. I normally keep mine in grid. The next thing that I want to do is you probably just wanna go ahead and copy some of these settings that we have down here. I like to have my smart tool selected. How I got that is if you click a little bit above all three of these options, it'll highlight all of them. That way uh, your cursor can do multiple things whenever you're editing different things in Pro Tools. The next thing that we're gonna go to is gonna be our counter window. I'm gonna pull up bars and beats and how I do that is by clicking this arrow. You know, the last thing here, this is not super important. It works for my workflow. I personally like to have quick punch selected and I like to have loop selected. How I adjusted that was just right click and uh, select. All right, this is not the fancy stuff, but I promise you as we continue to go through here, whenever you click record is really gonna be setting you up. So just a couple more things here, stay locked in and I promise you, you're gonna be glad that you did. The next thing that I'm gonna adjust here is over here. So what we need to do is we need to do, uh, I like to have comments just in case, you know, if you know I'm sending it off to another engineer, I think that's pretty neat. And then we're gonna go inserts A through E, inserts F through J, sends A through E. I personally like to have uh, sends F through J, I O, and I like to have my track color for whenever I color code things. And just a very brief rundown of what's happening here within the inserts and the sends. Basically your inserts are going to be your plugins. So you know, your EQs, your compressors, things like that. Your sends, that's a little bit more complex for the sake of this video, but if you want to check out the difference between, you know, sin tracks and aux tracks and things like that, I will link that video down in the description. I think that'll be super helpful as you start to learn Pro Tools to really understand what aux tracks are, sin tracks are, and things like that. But I think that really kind of keys us up to diving into something that's probably a little bit more interesting, which is actually creating your recording template. We're gonna start adding some tracks to our session. So clearly we can't do nothing with a click track. That's basically just gonna be our metronome. We could honestly go ahead and mute that. And then from here, what we need to do is we need to add some tracks. So how we're gonna do that, so we're gonna go up here and we're going to go to add new track and just kind of follow along with the things that I am adding. And we'll kind of start to walk through that as we go through the training. So we need one stereo master fader. We're gonna go over here and add another one. We need one stereo aux input and this is going to be our vocal bus we're going to go five mono audio tracks and this is going to be where we're going to do some stuff with with our hooks and then the next thing we're going to go five mono audio tracks and this is going to be where we start to work on the verse and then from there we're going to go ahead and go to create and bam now we're starting to actually look like a recording session right so what we're going to do is we're just going to go down here and label some things so you can kind of follow along here this is going to be hook Recording track. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and color code some things. So for the vocal bus, I like to make mine red, some type of red. Um, for my hooks, I like to make all of my hooks purple. So if you click here and hold down shift and click, you can now adjust all these at one time. So we are gonna make those purple. I like purple. And then we're gonna make this verse like a turquoise color. Color them however you want. These are my go-tos. So that looks a lot better, a lot easier to kind of follow along there. And just a quick tip here, this hook recording and what these recording tracks are doing, we do have some uh, training and tutorials basically explaining exactly the reason why we have a hook recording track and a verse recording track. I'll pull that video up right now. That should be popping up. So maybe you wanna click on it and put it in another tab or save it somewhere so you can go back and watch it. It's a really cool trick or hack uh, whenever you start recording your vocals that I think you'll really like. The next thing that we need to do, yes, we do have our IO set up appropriately up here that we did in, in phase one of this training. The next thing that we need to do is we actually need to update our audio tracks and aux tracks to the appropriate inputs and outputs or IOs. The way that Pro Tools is set up is you're gonna have your inputs up here. This is gonna be the one on the top. Your outputs are gonna be the one down here, which is gonna be at the bottom. And we need to set up our inputs to the correct input on our interface. So I know that I've got my microphone plugged into uh, input number one on my interface. So what we're gonna do here is on all of our audio tracks, so your hook recording all the way down to your verse ad libs, we need to adjust all of these inputs. So now that we've got all of these selected, what we need to do is we need to hold down shift and option and we need to click here, which is our input and we need to go to interface and then select the appropriate input on our interface where a microphone is plugged into. So we're gonna go 
bam. All, you see how all of those changed right there? Now, whenever we click this, bam, bam. Bop, 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 boom. We got signal, so we did it right. So now that we've got our inputs adjusted, there is a couple more things that we need to do, but I want to briefly, very briefly, break down what this vocal bus is doing. So ultimately, what we're gonna do with this vocal bus is we're going to take all of these audio files and we're going to send these out into one single vocal bus. So think about it this way, say you, on all of your vocals. It's like, man, all of my vocals are dull. I need to add an EQ on there. Well, you don't wanna go here and add your EQ on, you know, 10 or 15 tracks and have to do it on every single one. You wanna do it in one central location. If we throw this EQ on this vocal bus and we route all of our audio tracks out, right? So out here into a vocal bus, what happens is anything that is routed into this aux track or this vocal bus, whatever plugin or insert that I add on this vocal bus, it affects everything that's routed to it. So if I add an EQ here, it's affecting all of these tracks that are routed into this vocal bus. So we need to set that up though. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to make an input. We're gonna go bus and we're gonna go bus one and two, but we're gonna rename it. So we're gonna right click here, rename, and we're gonna go vocal bus. So now we've got something to actually route things out into. So we need to route these out into the vocal bus. We've got all these selected again. We're going to hold down shift and option. We're going to go here to our output. Instead of going to interface like we did with the input, we're going to go to bus. We're going to select vocal bus. So now all of these tracks are now routed to the vocal bus. So whenever I turn this down, it turns all of my vocals down. Instead of having to go down here and adjust all of these settings, we ain't got time for to do all that, come on, man. The last thing that we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make sure that this is routed out into the same output as our master fader. And I think we're about ready to rock and roll. Now, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, we could spend hours talking about inserts and plugins and things like that. That's gonna be more so for another video. We've got other trainings and things like that available on our YouTube channel. But ultimately the goal today is to get you actually recording some stuff within Pro Tools, which is what we're gonna do. So what I have done is down in the description, I have linked some of our recording templates. So some of these are free, some of them's paid. And ultimately what that's going to do is you're going to get access to some recording templates. It's already got pre-made plugins, you know, your EQs, your compressor, some reverb and stuff like that. That way you're not having to figure that out on your own. We've already kind of created that for you. But I know there's another group of you out there that likes to really kind of understand what's happening. I got to let you know about a brand new training that we just came out with, the Record Radio Ready Vocals Training. It's a 60 minute in-depth training, taking you from point A to point Z, basically covering everything that we've, we're covering today, but just in a longer form video. Not only are you getting the video training, you're also getting some PDF guides, some templates, all kinds of other bonuses. So if you click the link down in the description, it's gonna be titled the Record Radio Ready Vocals Course. So like you've seen in the beginning of the training, instead of just creating it from scratch like we did this time around, now you're gonna be able to create it from a template and you're gonna be able to shortcut all of this stuff. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to go to File, we're going to go to save as template and the category, you could add your own category. Uh, you don't necessarily have to, but you could. For this, we're just gonna go YouTube training and then you can title it, you know, whatever you want, recording template. So now whenever you create your, your Pro Tools template, you're gonna be able to create it from your own personalized template. So we've made it. We're finally gonna create your song. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to walk you through some basic things you need to know before you start recording those vocals. So the first thing you probably need to do whenever you are creating your song is importing your beat, right? You gotta import your instrumental unless you're doing some acapella stuff. You just go to file, you're gonna go to import, you're gonna go to audio, and you're going to find the beat that you want to use. We're gonna go here, then we're gonna to go to convert. Then we're gonna to go to open, open one more time, and Pro Tools is gonna start rendering it and bringing it into your Pro Tools session. We're gonna click okay, and yeah, you've got your beat imported. So how do we actually start to record our vocals? Crazy enough, it took me a couple days to figure out how to start recording vocals in Pro Tools because there's a couple things that you need to do every single time that you record vocals. So there's two parts. The first thing you need to do is you need to show Pro Tools which track you're looking to record on. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here and we're gonna record on our recording tracks. So we're gonna go bam, 
and that lets Pro Tools know, hey, I'm gonna be recording on this track. And then whenever you're ready to start recording, you're gonna go here, then you're gonna go here, up here, and you're gonna click play. Now, obviously there's a little bit more in-depth training about how to record your, your vocals and things like that. In this video, you should be seeing it pop up right about now. This video is going to give you different tips and tricks on how to really maximize your recording sessions. And then last but not least, what we gotta do now is we've got to export our song. So say you've got all your recording done, we've gotta export our song in a certain way. So what we're gonna do is in Pro Tools, we're going to go to File, we're going to go to Bounce Mix, we are going to, you know, name it whatever we want to name it. These scenarios, I'm just going to export a MP3. You're going to make sure you've got the appropriate output selected. I normally just go output and select the output that I've got selected on my master fader here. And then I like to go 44.1. And we're just going to save it to our desktop. And we're going to go bounce. And then we're going to go OK. So at this point, there's clearly two types of people. There's people that's about to click off the video. Then there's others that have enjoyed the video but want a little bit more in-depth training. If you want a little bit more in-depth training, we've got the Record Radio Ready Vocals Pro Tools training. That's linked down in the description. But if you're the kind of person that just wants to know the basics, you just got all the basics. Hey, if you have not yet, I would highly suggest considering hitting that subscribe button because we're coming with all the heat. We're going to keep pumping it out, helping you become the audio engineer that you desire to be along your journey. We cannot wait to catch you here soon, but until then, I'm getting out of here. Peace.